Okay, now we go back to the second uh, part of the uh, lecture, which is the processing of the polymers, matrix, composites, and the rubbers. So we're going to talk first about the starting materials for the PNC, and then the open mold processes, the closed mold processing, the filaments winding, the polystration processes, and the other PMC shaving processes. So the PMC or the polymer matrix composites is a composite material consisting of the polymers, but it's going to be embedded with reinforcing faces such as the fibers or the powders. One of the common uh, materials for that is what we know as the fiberglass, for example. So the importance of the PMC processes is drive from the growing use of this class of the materials, especially the fiber reinforced polymers. The fibers reinforced composites can be designed with a very high strength to weight and the models to weight ratios. Now, what will be the other example for the polymers matrix composites or the fiber reinforced polymers? I, I mentioned something about the uh, the fiber glass, but another Example of it is carbon fiber. Exactly. Okay, because once again, uh, we are going to talk about the manufacturing of this process later. So, uh, the main processing we can have for the PMC is going to be the open mold processes, which are based on the FRB manual procedures for the laying of the raisins and the fibers onto forms. Or we can use the closed mold processes, which can be similar to the plastic molding. We can use the filament winding, which continuous filaments are going to be dipped into liquid resin and there's going to be wound up, uh, uh, rubbed about around the rotating mandrels using a rigid hollow cylindrical shapes. The bolstration uh, actually is similar to the extrusion, only adapted to include a continuous fiber reinforcement. Other operations were going to be not uh, classified into the, the previous categories. So the classification we can have for the manufacturing process for the fiber reinforced polymers composite is going to be first processes for the com continuous fiber PMC or for the short fibers PMC. So once again, the open molds, which can be done by hand or automated tape uh, laying. We can use the closed mold, which is going to be the compression molding, or it can be the resin transfer molding, the filament winding, and the uh, polystyrene processes and other like the tube rolling. For the short fibers, the open mold process like the spray up, the closed mold like the compression molding or transfer molding or the injection moldings, or others like the centrifugal casting or the continuous dating. Most of these process actually use it almost daily, but you never notice that. So the polymer matrix usually going to be a thermosetting polymers are going to be the most types of the matrix materials. The principle of thermosetting polymer is going to be the phenolics, which used with the particulate reinforcing phases. And we have the polyesters and the epoxies, which is most closely associated with the FRPS. Usually thermoplastic modeling compounds include the fillers or the reinforcement uh, agents. And uh, by the way, all the rubbers are reinforced with the carbon black, like what we have in the tires. The reinforcement agent, a reinforcement agent we use in the polymer matrix. Uh, the possible geometries can be the fibers, the particles, and the flakes, and that's what we use mainly uh, if, if you ever done the uh, uh, fiberglass working, we're using either small fibers or the small particles, sometimes we're using the flex. The possible materials can be the ceramics, the metals, the other polymers or elements such as the carbon or the boron. The particles and the flex are used in many plastic molding compounds and of the most imaging interest is the use of the fibers such as the reinforcing faces in the FRPs. Sometimes we're using something called the mat and it performs as the reinforcement. 
The fibers also can be used as a mat format, uh, as you can see actually, as reinforced over the tires I mentioned earlier. So a field consisting of the randomly oriented short fibers held loosely together with the binders. The mats are commercially available as a blanket, uh, of the various weights, thickness, and the width. You can purchase them. You can put the layers with the epoxy, for example, multiple times until we are going to form the shape. And that's what we do actually in the uh, process of manufacturing of the, uh, uh, the fiber glass. The mats also can be cut and shaped to use as a free forms in some of the closed mold processes if necessary. Usually during the molding, the resin saturates the, uh, the preforms and then it's going to be cured, thus it's going to be yielding the fiber reinforced molding uh, process. So actually what's happening inside the fiber glass, for example, is going to be something similar to that. The matrix, which is the uh, resin or uh, the, uh, the thermoset material, and uh, the fiber is going to be holded the things. So instead of being something brittle and loosey, the fiber is going to give us some elasticity and also is going to give us some reinforcement inside. How to combining the matrix and the reinforcement? Usually the starting materials arrive in the fabrication operation as a separate entities. They're going to be combined into a composite during the shaping. For example, the filaments winding and the polystyrene, in which the reinforcement faces will be equal to a continuous fibers. The two components material is going to be combined into some of the starting forms that is going to be convenient for the use in the shaping processes. Like for example, do the molding compounds or the using of the pre bricks. I don't need to. Well, actually, the molding compounds where we're going to have the FRB composite molding compounds consisting of the resin matrix with the short randomly dispersed fibers, similar to those used in the plastic moldings. Well, the good thing with the molding is that, uh, sorry, most of the molding compounds for the composite processes are going to be a thermosetic polymers. And usually, they designed for molding, so they may, may be capable of, uh, for example, uh, they should not be cured prior to the shape processing. They always should be wait for the curing until we finishing the final shaping and processing. The curing is going to be done, uh, sometimes it's going to be during uh, or after the final shaping because we cannot stop the curing process. It's always going to be heating up it's always going to be evaporating the uh, the binders and start to solidify. The the pre bricks is a fiber implemented with the partially cured uh, thermoset resins to facilitate the shape processing. This can be available as a tapes or sometimes going to be a cross piled sheets of fabrics which is going to be uh, uh, mixed with the resins. Uh, curing is going to be complete, uh, complete usually, once again, uh, during the shaping or even after the shaping process. And uh, the advantage of it is that uh, fabricated with the continuous filaments is possible, rather than using the small chopped random uh, filaments that we're using in the, uh, for, in the uh, molding compounds. There's also a nice smell. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Uh, but you shouldn't uh, smell it a lot. <laughs> we You'll be keep, addicted we to it. Keep the carbon fiber rolls in in the freezer. Ah, uh, that's nice. <laughs> okay, so the open mold process is usually going to be a shaming process that uses a single positive or negative mold surface to produce the laminated FRB structure. And once again, that's what we use in the uh, in the uh, process of the uh, fiber glass. We we are always going to have the mold. Sometimes the mold can be a negative. That means it's going to be a concave down, and we 
going to add layers after layers, then it's going to take the shape of this mold. Or sometimes, for example, it's going to be a spherical shape. Then I will start to cover it from the top multiple layers and have the final products which is going to take the convex shape. The starting material is going to be applied in the, in the on the mold or to the mold in layers, building up to the desired thickness. Then it's going to be followed by the curing and the part removal. And sometimes we uh, also can do some machining on that. Uh, the common raisins is, are going to be the unsaturated polyesters and the epoxies using the fiber glass as the reinforcement. The open mold processes are going to be, uh, the applying uh, process can be different. We can simply uh, do the processing by hand. Okay, so I can add the layer and then using the brush or the roller to add the raisin on top of it. Then I keep adding that layer by layer by hand. Sometimes we can buy spray up. So again, to spray the raisin and again to mix the uh, flakes with it at the same time and it's going to spray the layer over the layers and again to have the final shape. I can do it by the vacuum bagging, which is actually something similar to the same bag you're using in the uh, the sewing of your cloth, the vacuum bag. Okay, so once again, it's going to add the hand layout, and then we're going to use the atmospheric pressure to compact uh, the uh, to compact the the layers until it's going to be laminated. Also, I can use the automated tape laying machine, which is uh, automated process can be done by the CNC machining. So once again, the hand lay of uh, uh, method. Again, to uh, add the uh, material by, as you can see here, layer by layer by hand, and use the roller to compacting the things. Then leave it for a while until it's going to be cured. Then again, to take the final shape. This process is usually going to be a labor intensive, multiple workers or even going to be one person going to do that. It's time consuming. Uh, so I don't need to explain this test because it's written here. Uh, this process is actually quite old and stated from back 1940s when it was first used to build the boat hulls in the World War II. So once again, we're going to add the layers after layers and we're going to compact them by using the rollers and this is very uh, actually uh, good process again to make big parts for example the british navy back in the uh, 50s they built a whole a, a boat with 85 meter length which is actually uh, it's, it's a good thing yeah and also you know that the fiber is actually it's lightweight uh, it can be fixed, and uh, I think it's a good reason for the salt. To increase the rate of the manufacturing, we can use the spray up methods. So we are going to have the liquid resin They're going to be sprayed through the nozzle. At the same time, the continuous roofing is going to be chopping the choked by the mechanism and is going to be mixed with the resin and start to build up the layers. Of course, this will be less time consuming, uh, high production rate, but many people think that the hand up layer is going to be stronger than the spray up methods because the reinforcement is going to be continuous rather than the small chop materials. The products made by the spray up layers, once again, the boat holes, the bathtubs, the shower stalls, the automobile and the truck body parts and so on. Uh, so once again, these uh, since the products made by the spray of layers have randomly oriented short fibers, they are not as strong as those made by the lay up, uh, um, hand lay up uh, parts in which the fibers are going to be continuous and directed. The other process is we're going to add the layers over the top of each other. Then we are going to use the negative pressure. We we are going to actually vacuum the bag, and the compression is going to be caused apart to laminate it on top of each other. Uh, 
So simply using the atmospheric pressure to suck the air from the uh, under the vacuum bag to compact the composite layers down and make them high quality laminated. The layers from the bottom include the mold, the mold release, the composites, the peel ply, the uh, pre-third cloth, the vacuum bag, and also we need the vacuum valve here at the top and the sealing tape from the side to prevent any escape for the pressure. The other player is, uh, hopefully this is a video. No, it's not a video. Actually, the other plus is the automated tape laying machine. So we get to use something like an adhesive tape or something like the duct tape. But actually, we're going to spray the the, uh, the binding material. Then we're going to add the uh, layers continuously. At the end, you can see that this section, the contest section, can be removed up after solidification and we're going to have it as a solid shape. So it's automated tape laying machine operated by the dispensing of the uh, pre breaks tapes into the open mold followed by uh, the program pad. Typical machine consists of the overhead uh, gantry to which the dispensing head is going to be attached. The gantry permits to remove in the XYZ the trouble of the head as defined by the continuity. The curing we have in the open mold processes, the curing required to for all the thermosilling raises as we mentioned earlier. The curing cross links uh, uh, the polymers, transforming it from the liquid state to the highly plastic conditions into a hardened products. We have three principal processes param uh, parameters in the curing, which is it's going to take time. It's need to increase the temperature required a little bit. The pressure will increase the rate of the uh, curing. The curing is possible at room temperature. And that's actually what we use in the case of the hand layup and the separate layup procedures. And uh, usually the molding made by those processes is going to be often large and the heating will be difficult due to the product size. In some cases, it may take days before it's going to cure completely. The curing method based on the heatings. We are going to have the opening curing provides the heats at closely controlled temperatures. Some curing oven are going to be equipped with the draw and a partial vacuum. We can also use the infrared heating used in the application where the uh, uh, and practical to place the molding in the oven. And we can use the curing in an autoclave, which we're going to use in closed chambers to cool the apply of the heat and the pressure, the controlled level, something like what we have in the autoclave for the car painting. <clears throat> the closed mold processing, which are going to be performed in the mold consisting of two sections that are going to be open and closed each molding cycle. The tooling cost uh, is going to be more than twice the cost of the comparable oven mold due to the more complex equipment required in these processes. The advantage of the closed mold is going to be good finishing. If we are going to compare it uh, to the uh, open mold for all part services, usually in the open mold, only the part which face the, the mold is going to have good service finishing while the other side is going to be uh, poor service finishing. Higher production rate because the thing is going to be closing and clo uh, opening and closed multiple times and the curing time is going to be faster. Closing control over the tolerances because we're going to compress the material at the same time and also more complex three dimensional shapes are going to be possible. The Classification of the closed mold processes can be classified as the compression molding, transfer molding, or the injection molding. So for the compression mold PMS processes, where the place in the lower mold sections, we show you that earlier actually, and the sections are going to be brought together under the pressure 
closing the charge, you take the shape of the cavity. Yes, just give me one second. Uh, I think someone asking. No, uh, it's a different room. Anyway, yep. So the molds have again to be heated to cure the TS polymer at higher rate. And when the molding is going to be sufficiently cured, the mold is going to be open and the bar is going to be removed. Several shaving processes for the PS, uh, PMC based on the compression moldings and are going to be mostly uh, in the form of the starting material. The transfer mold PMC processes where the charge of the thermal setting resins with the short fibers is going to be placed in the pot or chamber heated and squeezed by the ram action into the one or more mold cavities. So transfer because we're going to send the material through the channels to fill the cavity. That's why we transfer the things and we call the transfer molding PMC. The mold is going to be heated to cure the resin at higher rate and the name of the process drives from the fact that the fluid polymers is going to be transferred from the port into the mold. The conventional injection molding was used for both the uh, thermoplastic and the thermosets. Uh, virtually all the thermoplastic can be reinforced with the fibers. Chalk fibers must be used of the cases. And actually, sometimes they use the powder and they call it the nanotechnology nowadays. I don't know why they call it nanotechnology. The continuous fibers will be reduced by the action of the rotating screw in the barrel. And during the injection into the mold cavity, the fibers will tend to become aligned as they are going to be passed through the nozzles. The filament winding, and that's what we actually use in the carbon fibers is a recently implemented continuous fibers are going to be worked around a rotating mandrel that has the internal shape of the desired FRB products. And the resin then is going to be cured and the mandrel is going to be removed. Well, actually, uh, uh, Pavilos is the, uh, has built the machine and he using it to make the, uh, the body of the rockets in the rocket team. And I will ask him to send you some photos or video, short video for the uh, using of the uh, filament winding. So uh, once again, the fiber rubbing are going to be pulled through the resin pad immediately before being wound on the helical pattern into the mandrels. Usually using something like uh, uh, the cross shapes to give it more strength. So we do it as what we call the, the crisscross cross pattern with the previous until the desired part thickness has been obtained. So that's how it's happening. We are going to take the continuous rubbing uh, uh, path it in the resin path. Then we're going to wound it around the mandrel. Uh, it can have different shapes, the helical winding. We can have it as the circumferential winding and we can have it as the polar winding. This is uh, one of the example. Actually, the machine that Vavilos built is it's not that size, actually. He's using uh, the PVC pipe with uh, five inches to make the main body of the uh, well, the rocket ATM. The uh, pulsation processes were similar to the extrusion, but the workpiece is going to be pulled through the die instead of being pushed. Like the extrusion, the illustration products are going to be continuously traced sections of the constant cross section. Developed back in the 50s for making all the fishing rows of the glass fiber reinforced polymers. Some related processes are going to be called the pull forming, is going to be used to make the parts that are going to be cured, uh, curved, and which may have the variation in the cross section throughout their length. Okay, I think this is it. Oh, no. Uh, yeah, so this will be the illustration. Once again, we said it's going to be pulled through the die instead of pushed through the die. Uh, once again, we're going to have the multiple uh, threads. They're going to be uh, run through the resin path. They're going to be combined together through the pre die former, then pulled through the die, and we're going to cut it to multiple sections after this operation.
Okay, so and the pull forming also we can uh, form the shape uh, after the shaping die to take a multiple uh, shapes like the curved one, for example. So this will be an additional steps to form the length into a semicircular contours and alter the cross section or at one or more location along the length. Usually the pull extrusion is going to be limited to the straight sections of the cross section. And there's also a need for long parts with the continuous fiber reinforcement that are going to be curved rather than straight and whose cross section may be varied throughout. Other PMC shaving processes can be the centrifugal casting, the tube rolling, the continuous laminating, the cutting of the FRP. In addition, many traditional thermoplastic shapers processes also applicable of the FRPS, like for example, the blow molding, the thermoforming, and the extrusion processes. Okay, so uh, after this lecture, we're only going to have uh, one lecture within the syllabus and one extra lecture again to give you from the advanced manufacturing. So next week we're going to talk about the ceramic and the glass and by that we are going to finish the syllabus. The other one is going to be about the industrial robotics. That's something we're going to come to in the advanced manufacturing uh, if we're going to run the subject later. I'm not sure about this one. I'm going to update you on time. So if you have any question about the uh, classic lecture, go ahead. If you have any question about the major project, uh, we need to stop this recording and go back to the major project. So uh, go ahead, if you have any questions. So is this our second last lecture this yeah. semester? Well, I'm going to run lecture in week 12, as I told you, it's going to be the industrial robotics. Oh, that'll be awesome. Thank you. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to stop the recording here. I'm going to actually.